how I got rich beekeeping. Okay, now that I have your attention, stay with me for a minute. Let me explain to you why I wanted to get your attention. For many years, I've been trying to tell beekeepers the main reason why your honeybees are dying is from the toxic chemicals in our environment that the crop farmers, mostly the crop farmers, what they use in their fields, they spray. I have actually witnessed my honeybees dying from the toxic chemicals, neonics for one thing, that the crop farmers have sprayed. The videos are on my channel. I'm trying to tell everybody what they're doing to us is not right. Um, so maybe I'm not completely rich, but it depends on your definition of rich. But let me explain this to you. Three things have happened in my life, and I wasn't going to make any more videos, but okay, number one, my honeybees die constantly, and I have a hard time getting through winter. Number two, my wife has had breast cancer and had her breast removed, cut off, okay? And it doesn't, cancer doesn't run in her family. And number three, you see that dog there? The Siberian Husky, Sasha, come here. Not Nikolai. Sasha's just now turning one year old. And she started developing seizures a couple months ago. And basically the vet's saying that she has epilepsy. And I, I don't know this vet very, very well. I'm trying to find a decent vet. And I wanted to know how long have dogs been having seizures. And she's telling me it's like forever. And she's saying it's like 20% of dogs have seizures. And I don't think that's right. So basically, three, three things in my life going on that I attribute to the toxic chemicals in our environment. Um, I don't know how many dog owners there are that watch my videos, but last week I was sitting eating my lunch, and she's already had two minor seizures previous to that, within the, like three or four weeks previous to last week, but... She's burying a stone. Why would you want to bury it? Is that a bone? But last week when I was eating my lunch and she was sitting next to me, oh, that's part of a bone. She started having real violent seizures. The last for like two or three minutes. And then it stopped. And she had like two or three minutes where she could walk around. And then it started again. And she was looking at me and whining like she wanted us to stop. And I couldn't do a damn thing about it. Our government is fucking us over. Let me show you this. Oh, and by the way, I had bought a male a few months after my wife had brought home this female. And I wanted to have a team of dogs for mushing. And now they're telling me she can't have puppies. I should have her neutered. So I don't know what the hell to do. But anyway, May 2019, early in the morning, I have a crop farmer south of me, 150 yards south of me. I saw him out there early in the morning planting, and he had tanks on his tractors, and he was spraying. And the wind was coming from that direction very strong. And I had to go away and do an electrical job. I came home at lunch, and I had several hives here. And my bees were coming out. Ended up on the ground going like this. They were dying. That This video is on my channel. So I, I called that farmer's family. and told them what happened. And, and waited for them to apologize. They're Mennonites. They're supposed to be good church going people. And they never came out to apologize that day. So then the next day. After giving that farmer 24 hours to apologize. I called the state of Michigan. And this woman right here came out. And she acted like, oh, she's so concerned about my honeybees. And she took samples, okay? And I told her that it was the nurse bees, the young bees that never went out foraging. They got the chemicals blew into my hive, hives, and the, these nurse bees were coming out dying. And she agreed, yeah, those bees look like nurse bees. So she took the samples, and a month later, they, they called me on the phone and said, yes, the chemicals, the neonics came from that crop farmer. 
they already confirmed that. And then a month after that, so here we are. The the poisoning happened in, in May of 2019. Here we are in August of 2019. There's a letter saying that the crop farmer did nothing wrong, even though those chemicals came from the crop farmer. He did nothing wrong, and it wasn't windy that day, and all this other bullshit, you know? How do you fight the government? Just like I was talking to the vet yesterday, I says, what's causing these dogs to have epilepsy? If 20% of our dogs are having epilepsy, what, what's causing it? And I was telling her about my experience with chemicals killing my bees and my wife having breast cancer and how the, the rich people want us to have cancer. They, can, they make a lot of money. My wife's treatment was over $100,000, so they basically own her house now. And she, and she said, well... That's the way it is, and we can't do anything about it, blah, blah, blah. All right? I said, well, why don't we all get together and stop this? And I got to realize, the people that are making money with the things the way they are now, they're not going to say anything. 50% of the people are getting their income from the government. Either they work for the government or they're getting their Social Security checks from the government, and they don't want to say anything. And then you get the people that are getting their paychecks working at the hospital, or, or a vet, basically, you know, get making money off, off of the way things are. And the bee industry is the same way. They're selling you lots of products to treat varroa mites. But varroa mites are not the biggest issue. The biggest issue is the toxic chemicals killing your bees. That's why... I, I monitor the size of my colonies constantly, all winter long. And I know my bees are dying because they have the toxic chemicals in their hive. It's in the pollen. It's in the honey. It's in the wax. So I'm constantly monitoring the size of my colonies. And when I find a colony that's too small, I bring it in. I'll show you this. Am I the only person in the United States or the world that does indoor hive inspections during the winter? It's December 8th. We don't have any snow right now, but it is cold. It's about 30 degrees outside, 32 or so. And Domino cane sugar was very expensive recently. From, it went from under $5 to $8.36. So I didn't do syrup during the fall. I'm just trying to make sure they have enough of this Domino cane sugar that I make into sticks. I don't know why you guys are making fondant. You don't want to use corn syrup. Domino cane sugar is non-GMO. And if you guys, nobody understands what GMO means. It means the plants can absorb the chemicals that they're using. The farmers spray chemicals and the plants absorb those chemicals. Okay, if the plants absorb the chemicals, it's in the pond, it's in the, it's in the plant, it's in the food we eat. And they've never done any long-term studies on that. So basically, I didn't do syrup in the fall, so I'll, my, I'm constantly monitoring. This right here is very light. Even though they have sugar, they still have to have honey. And I'm the only person that I know of that does this. Close this door here. I'm going to add frames of honey. See, I've got frames of honey. That's the other thing. Uh, if you're a beekeeper... Don't sell your honey until the following spring until you you've used if you if you sell your honey in the fall, you're not gonna have any honey as a backup. So sell your honey in the spring when it starts to warm up and you know your bees are gonna be okay when they don't need any more honey. So it's very simple. Well, I'll pause this. Okay, I got that strap off. Like I said in other videos, uh, indoor hive inspection, majority of the bees stay on the frames. And to get the bees off, you just tap. I know that rattles up the bees in the hive. So you want to step back for a couple minutes. Let them do whatever they're going to do. If they want to come out, go ahead and come out. And then... I normally knock the bees off the screen, but what I would do with the inner cover, I'm going to set it right here on the floor. 
right next to the hive. And I have a, uh, a little LED flashlight that I use. I should have a light on my uh, on a, a helmet or something, but I don't. I put it in my mouth and it gives me both hands to look. This is a very light hive. So I know they don't have much honey. And what I do is I just find the easiest, the, the easiest frame to move on the side where the bees aren't, where they're not on the frame. Then there's a little bit of honey there, but not a lot. And then I'll set that down here. And then I always check for a queen. During the winter, if they don't have a queen, they don't always make that roar. They're not all that loud, so you won't know. And there's a, a little bit on this. And then uh, I don't actually have to take out the frames after I remove a couple of them. So there's some honey on that one. See, a lot of these bees will stay on that frame. And if you do this inspection within 10 minutes or so, they'll still be on that frame when you put that frame back in. And you don't want to kill any bees when you're doing this. And uh, after you get a few frames out, it gives you the room to... Uh, see, I'm not wearing a veil. Okay? I'm not wearing gloves. The bees aren't stinging me. That's another misconception. You guys think that all honeybees are vicious? They're not. It's how you... A beekeeper treats these bees when he does the inspection. If you treat them rough and they have a bad experience, they'll remember that. And the next time you open the hive, they're going to come after you right away. So what I do is I take this LED flashlight and I look at both sides as I'm sliding frames over. until I locate that queen. If I do not find the queen, and see they still have brood, I'll look and I'll, and I'll take that frame out and I'll see if they have eggs. Uh, the salicylic acid I've been using, they want you to wait, I do like three times every fifth day, two times every seventh day, and then one more treatment when the queen has stopped laying and they don't have any brood. But my, my colonies, they lay all the way up till the end of the year. So, and it depends on the colony when that queen starts learning. So, to do that last treatment, it's kind of difficult to know when to do it for all your colonies. And I just had one of my Varox vaporizers burn out on me, so now I only have one. So, I wish there was a better treatment. Uh, you guys want to use these treatments, a uh, one-time treatment. It's hard on your bees. The formic pro formic acid kills 10% of your queens every time you use it. They have a cop out that it says it kills fragile queens. It just randomly kills queens because it's hard on your bees. It kills your bees, it kills your queens. Well, I didn't find a queen, but anyway, I'm going to pause this. You see how many bees I have actually out? Not very many. Most of them have stayed on the inner cover, on the frames. Okay, and what I'm going to do is when I put this back together, I'm going to take the frames that don't have hardly any honey on it and, and those that don't have a lot of bees. And I'm going to make sure I put honey back into the side, basically. And there's just the Domino King sugar that I, I put in there. And what I notice is if they can't reach it, sometimes they don't go down to it. So you want to make sure you have it in the center and you want to have it high enough where they can come down as a cluster and, and get to that during the winter. So I'm going to pause this again. Oh, this is a room that I built before winter. And I do have a heat source in here, but I'm not using it. They don't need it. This is my dark room. If I have small colonies, I bring them in here. And if I feel like this one right here is the next one I'm going to do. If I feel that it's too light, 
or if something's going on with that colony, I'll bring it in to the other room. The other room, I don't keep that dark. Uh, I could put up curtains and stuff to keep it dark, but it would be kind of difficult to do. So this is my dark, cool room. And I never did... I didn't do anything out here. I got busy with other construction projects. I was going to put up insulation here. Um, these colonies here, I noticed they were light, and I didn't have time... Where I knew I wouldn't have time to actually go through and uh, add frames of honey. So I just stuck on a medium super of honey on the super that was already there. And let me show you this. There's still bees there. So if it's too cold, you can't open the hive outside. You don't want bees ending up on the ground when it's cold. You can actually destroy a colony that way. I will leave it like this. I will strap it. And I will bring it in. And I will... I will do what I'm doing with that colony inside, but I will bring it down to one medium by removing the medium and taking out the empty frames and just making it one medium. But you don't want your bees running out of honey. And because I didn't do SERP this fall, this last fall, I have to make sure that they have enough honey because I didn't want to spend the $8.36 for each 10-pound bag of Domino cane sugar. Just a couple years ago, you could get 10-pound bag of Domino cane sugar for under 5 bucks. But the world is so screwed up. The rich people are greedy. And I want to ask you one more thing before I let you go. Do you guys know what this represents? Here I am driving around Michigan with a Z and a V on the back of my truck. And every time I come across somebody asking, do you know what that means? They don't know. Why are Americans so freaking stupid? You guys don't know what the hell is going on in the world. Your government keeps you stupid. Because stupid people are easier to control. And again, I'm going to point this out. Three things in my life that make me hate the government. My wife has had breast cancer. She has no more breast. I had a doctor cut them off. Okay? My honeybees have a difficult time all year round. I've actually watched them come out of the hives dying. They don't live very long through winter. And now I have a dog that has epilepsy. It breaks my heart. With all these things that are going on in my life. And the rest of you guys, the rest of my fellow Americans, don't do anything about it. You guys are too busy trying to make money to pay your bills. I understand that. All right? But our life would be so much better if you didn't let the rich people control the government. Okay? The healthcare system is designed for them to make profit. It's not designed to make you healthy. They want you to come back several times, okay? The food they're feeding you is designed to make you fat. Every time I go anywhere, all I see is fat people. Come on, don't you care what the fuck you look like? I mean, really, I've seen young women at MSU, Michigan State University, at the canine emergency. I spent several hours there with my dog last week. I saw probably 30, 40 different women and out of those 30, 40 different women, only one of them was slim and attractive. The other, either they were fat and ugly or they were fat and pretty. And if you're pretty and you're fat, why don't you at least care what the fuck you look like? You know, I'm ugly. I could do nothing about how ugly I am. But if I were a good-looking, handsome guy and I were fat, I could at least care about being fat and lose my weight. All right? That's something you could do. Something about... But they want you fat because it causes all kinds of health problems. It's not good for your heart. It causes diabetes. You're more likely to get cancer. They make money off that. Think about it. You guys are nothing but a profit margin for them. All right? Thank you.